You all know I love reading the comment section down below and something I have been seeing many of you say recently is that you hate losing with ace king and that you don't know how to play it. Some of you think it's one of the most unprofitable hands you can be dealt, which is not true. So in this video, I'm going to explain why you are losing with ace king and not just why you're losing with ace king, but what you can do to stop losing with ace king because ace king is a big hand. It's actually one of the most profitable hands you can be dealt in No Limit Texas Hold'em. And if you're losing money with this hand or playing it far from optimally in general, you are making blunders that's going to make it really difficult for you to win, especially in the small stakes games because ace king makes the best top pair top kicker a lot of the time. And that is a hand that is incredibly profitable if you play it well. It also makes a whole lot of marginal made hands with ace high, which can be very unprofitable if you drastically overplay them. So in this video, I'm going to teach you three of the biggest mistakes I see people making with ace king and how you can fix them. Number one, stop getting it all in preflop when you are deep stacked with ace king. Let's take a look at two game theory optimal charts. Here we have the low jack versus a small blind three bet, 100 big blinds deep in a cash game. So you're the low jack, which would be under the gun if there were six players at the table and you raise with ace king. Then the small blind re-raises. Notice ace king suited and all the other hands in green call every time. Notice ace king offsuit is calling about half the time and re-raising the other half of the time. What this shows though is that you're not just automatically four betting the ace king and getting it in because your initial raising range is pretty tight, all these hands that are not grayed out. And therefore the small blind has to be pretty tight to re-raise you if they're playing anywhere near reasonably, which we're presuming they are. So if you're playing tight and they're playing tight and your opponent still wants to get money in the pot, while Ace King is pretty good, it does not want to get all the money in. Instead, you prefer to call and see the flop in position because then you keep your opponent in the pot with a lot of Ace X suited that you're dominating, some King X suited, right? And also Ace Queen offsuit, hands like that. So by calling, you keep your opponent's range wide and against a wide range, as wide as it can be in this spot at least, Ace King is in amazing shape. But if you re-raise and force your opponent to have something like aces, kings, queens, jacks, and ace king themselves to play a big pot with you, well, that's not really where you want to be at all. So call and force them to stay in when their range, essentially you want their range to be as wide as you possibly can and calling does that. You'd rather play a small or medium sized pot with a big edge than a big pot with a small or no edge. Let's take a look at another spot in a tournament. Your under the gun, eight, this means you raise. And then under the gun, seven, the player to your direct left. So you raise under the gun, eight-handed. The player to your left, three bets, and you're in a tournament. Notice, ace-king offsuit, again, just calls a large chunk of the time. About two-thirds of the time, it opts to just call. So you raise, you get three bet, you just call. You are not trying to load money into the pot, because if you do, what's going to give you action? Well big pairs and ace king and against that range you are not in good shape so instead you often err towards calling and keeping your opponent in the pot with as wide of a range as possible because again you'd rather play a smaller medium pot with a decently large edge compared to a big pot with no edge notice other hands that call a decent chunk of the time pocket queens pocket jacks pocket tens and um ace queen suited these are hands some people automatically re-raise and that is a big mistake Deep stacked, you do not necessarily want to get in with ace-king, especially when ranges should be tight for both players. Next, you want to stop overplaying ace-king post-flop. Ace-king is a premium hand in most situations, but you must be quick to adapt. When you miss the flop, don't make a pair or straight or flush draw. You need to look to play a small pot, not a huge one. Ace-king high is often good if the pot stays small, but not if it gets big. Let's take a look at a blunder. Here we are, 40 big blinds deep. We raise it up with ace-king suited. Big blind calls. Flop comes 6-5-3. One spade. We have a backdoor flush draw. Two over cards. And the best stays high. The big blind checks. What do you think we should do here? Write it in the comment section down below. Go down there. Write it in the comment section down below what you would do in this spot. I'll wait a second. Won't wait too long, but I'll wait a second. Well, you should check it back. 
Why? Because this board heavily favors the big blind caller and they're gonna check raise you a decent chunk of the time. And you really, really, really don't want to get check raised in the spot because if you bet and get check raised, it's pretty rough. Instead, you just wanna let it go check, check. And they go from there. This time though, the player bets small. They think, oh, raising continuation bet small, good strategy. And to be fair, if your opponents are too weak, tight, and straightforward, probably is a good strategy. This time though, they get check raised. When you bet and get check raised against a player who you think is too weak, tight, and straightforward, you should definitely fold. Against some players playing good, strong poker, you should probably stick around, but you don't love it, right? You'd much rather just let it go check, check on the flop. This is another example of a spot where you'd much rather just force your opponent to stay in with all of their random unpaired stuff, like Jack-8 suited, King-9 offsuit, stuff like that, that they would fold to a bet. But by betting, when you get raised, it's miserable. And when you get called, it's not particularly great either. This player stuck around. They turn a flush, draw. The opponent bets, kind of big. You got a call at this point. They do. River's a king of diamonds. The opponent goes all in. River top pair. A lot of people look at this spot and think, oh, you got a call. You made top pair, top kicker. That's the nuts. But no, 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 no. Not in this scenario. This is a spot where against almost everyone, unless they are absolutely maniacal and will blast it off with a random four, like eight, four suited, nine, four suited, queen, four suited, queen, four off suit, maybe if they're kind of crazy. This is a spot where you just have to fold. Yeah, you made top pair, top kicker, but what do you think they're going to show you here? They're either going to show you something like three of a kind, a straight, or flush. Or maybe a sporadic bluff. And most people aren't going to run sporadic bluffs, especially when you, remember, you could easily have a flush in this scenario. You would bet flush draws on the flop, you'd call a turn bet, and you'd be sitting here with a lot of nuts in your range. So even though your hand is pretty high up in what would be a normal-ish river range. In this scenario, it is absolutely not, and you gotta let it go. This player paid it off, though. They lost to a set. Not shocking. Let's take a look at another hand. Raise it up with ace-king on the button. 50 big blinds deep. Big blind calls. Eight, six, three. Similar situation to the last hand, where the right play is to check it back. This time, the hero does. Turns a 10 of hearts. Opponent checks. Should we bet? No, we don't really want to bet and get raised, and we'd much rather keep the opponent in with all of their nonsense. Also, notice in this scenario, they're not going to fold any pair. So when we bet and get called, it's not great. It is nice to bet this and then get there on the river with a flush and be able to make a bigger bet. But you got to realize, it's only going to happen 18-ish percent of the time when you improve to a flush. Now, I realize an ace and a king is also probably going to be good on this river, but quite often, if you just don't improve, you're going to be good enough on the river. And... You look so weak at this point to the point that many players in the big blind will bluff any of their hands that cannot win at the showdown, like king high, queen high, jack high, nine high, etc. Opponent goes, half pot. Should we call? Yes. Easy call in this scenario, even though we have only ace high because we beat all the busted draws and all the just weak hands that would check it down. They show up with jack seven suited. We win a little pot. Would you rather win a little pot or perhaps bet this flop, get check raised, and uh, have a very nasty scenario? You'd rather just keep the pot small. You're going to find that is very often the best play with your marginal made hands. Next, stop being afraid to go for maximum value. When you do make a premium post-flop hand, many people are afraid that they are not going to get paid off. They think that I really want to make sure that my opponent calls, so... I'm going to bet small, but that is a disaster. With your best hands, you almost always want to be making big bets. And if you want ace-king to be one of your most profitable hands, you must get maximum value when you do make a strong hand. Let's take a look at some examples. Ace-king of spades, 100 big blind Zeke, we raise. Big blind call, slot comes ace-10-2. They check, we continuation bet, $3.00. And at the $13 pot, right off the bat, you're going to want to bet bigger. This is a board where we're going to have a lot of aces that just want to get money in the pot and a lot of gut shots, like Queen Jack, that don't mind if the opponent folds, plus a lot of backdoor flush draws that don't mind if the opponent folds. So this is a spot to go ahead and make a big bet right off the bat, like $10. I think that's perfectly reasonable. And you're going to find that in small stakes cash games, a lot of players will continue with almost the same range if you bet $3 or $10 in this scenario. They shouldn't. 
but a lot of people will. Opponent calls, turns the six of spades, they check. This is a great spot to bet and bet big. We wanna get a lot of money in the pot with our hand that is almost always good. They go $10, a lot of people think, oh, 10 bucks, let's get some value. But no, 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 you wanna go even bigger than the spot. Opponent calls. Rivers of four of spades, you make the nuts. Actually, second nuts. You know what the nuts is? Type it in the comment section. All right, opponent checks. How much should we bet? Pot is $39. I think this is a great spot to bet big. At least the size of the pot, probably an overbet, even. Like 60 bucks, 80 bucks, get the money in. Now you may say, my opponent always folds if I overbet, unless they have a really good hand, like a set or two pair. Okay, well in that case, maybe, maybe it makes sense to go something like pot. But this, in general, is gonna be a great spot to bet huge because if you consider the hands in your range, you're still gonna have some hands like Queen Jack that really want to be able to bluff on the river. So, you can go for a big bet with those and put an ace in a pretty tough spot, especially put a 10 in a tough spot. And you can also bet really big with your flushes, just straight up for value. And when your opponent does have a good hand or they decide to get sticky, they're gonna call. This player instead bet 25. And a lot of people think in this spot, oh, 60% pot, good bet size. The opponent called, great success. But, no. This hero in this hand left a ton of money on the table. But a lot of people in this spot, they think, okay, I did great, I got value. I got value on the flop and the turn and the river, I played this hand well. But absolutely not. This player could have won substantially more money. The opponent had the ace four in this scenario for two pair. They're not gonna fold to any sort of big bet on the river. And even if they had just an ace, a lot of people find a hero call in this spot. Because a lot of small stakes players cannot fold top pair. Let's take a look at a better played hand. Ace, king, suited, raises. Big blind calls. Ace, nine, seven, opponent checks. Definitely a spot to bet and bet on the bigger side. If we go for eight into 13, I could be convinced that slightly bigger is even better in the smallest stakes cash games where people don't care if you bet eight or 10, but whatever, $8. Turns to four diamonds, opponent checks. Another great spot to bet big. Pot's 29. We go 35, a slide over bet. I love it. If you consider the opponent's range, they're gonna have a whole lot of Ace X, which is not gonna fold, and draws, which, you know, you don't really care if they stick around with a draw in this scenario because you crush all the draws, but you might as well charge them or make them fold out a hand like 10-8 that will only put in money when they improve to beat you. They call. Rivers of two of diamonds. Pots 99 bucks. Big blind checks. How much should we bet? Well, first things first. Notice by betting bigger on the flop and much bigger on the turn, we have 1.5x pot on the river instead of the previous hand where we had a ton of money behind on the river. For that reason, I think the overbet all in 151 makes a whole lot of sense. Now, again, if you tell me your opponent will fold everything besides two pair and better to an all in, or they may even fold two pair to an all in, then perhaps something like 90 is better. But if your opponent plays anywhere near decently and they're not drastically overfolding to overbets, this is a great spot to just rip it in. We do rip it in, we do get called. They had the same ace four and they were unable to fold. Another nice spot for us. So that's it. If you fix these three mistakes, you are gonna find that it's basically impossible to lose with ace king. And if you stop making these mistakes altogether and you start learning to play ace king very well, you are going to print money every time you are dealt ace king on average. Sure, sometimes you're gonna lose hands. You're gonna lose pots, obviously but ace-king should be one of the most profitable hands you are dealt. So remember, stop getting all-in pre-flop when you are deep stacked, especially when your range should be strong and your opponent's range should therefore be strong. Next, stop overplaying ace-king post-flop when you fail to connect with the flop. It's just a medium strength hand. And finally, stop being scared to go for maximum value. Sure, getting paid is nice, but getting paid all of your opponent's money is far better. Good luck in your games. Have fun. Thank you for being here. And I'll talk to you next time.